Hello, hello, hello. How are you today, Miss Kelly? Hanging in there. Oh, I forgot. Welcome to the Oxford <laughs> Downtown Diaries. I am I need to practice. It's fine. We're still <laughs> your dynamic duo, no matter how hard it is for Kimberly. It's been a long week. It's been a it long week. It has been a long week. It's about to be a long day. It is. And we haven't even really gotten started. Well, you have. I, I have. haven't we, really I started, started at started. eight in meetings this morning, <laughs> back to back. But here we are. So we have a new guest this week. Is yes. it your favorite guest? It's always my favorite guest. <laughs> <laughs> I prepped her. And just let her know that you'd be announcing that she's your favorite. Perfect. This is what happens when I'm late. She talks about me <laughs> until I get here. So it was Sandra, all good though, right? welcome to the show. <laughs> welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. <laughs> so excited. Probably is you're our newest boutique in town. Yes, I am. Sandra and Co. Yay. And tell us how it got started. Yeah. So I actually started my boutique four years ago online. And the name was Sunkissed and Sandy because I wanted like a Great Lakes Life clothing boutique and I wanted it to have kind of a beachy name, but everybody affiliated me with Sandy for some reason. Oh. So like people would walk into like my booth at vendor events and they'd be like, hi, Sandy. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> cute, but not my name. <laughs> so when I kind of rebranded this year, I was like, okay, I should think about like a different name and maybe tying it to myself. So that's how I came out with Cassandra Co. And then I opened my brick and mortar in May. I signed the lease in March, moved in the whole month of April, and then opened on May 4th. So I'm new to the brick and mortar scene, but not new to the boutique world. Gotcha. Yeah, awesome. And what was it that you just wanted to have your own brand, have your own clothing line? What was the driving behind that? So I have always been like, the fashionista, like always loved clothes my whole life. I worked for a really popular uh, Midwest retailer called Maurice's for like three years. And that really like kickstarted, not just like I already had a love for fashion, but it really kickstarted my desire to like run my own boutique and like um, bring in my own styles and style women and like get to do my own thing. So I, when I left there, I've, you know, been out of the retail game, you know, as far as like being in a brick and mortar every single day for like almost six years and going shopping like I didn't see me I didn't see my style I didn't see and it was very hard because like I was I'm a young adult you know like I was just getting out of college I was kind of going into the corporate world I didn't see any representation for like my age group at all I saw teenagers and then I saw older women And I didn't see anything in between that felt age appropriate, but also still felt really trendy and cute unless I was wearing something like down to my ankles or like a crop top. And maybe that sounds dramatic, but (laughs) if you walked into Target at the time when all this was going on, that's absolutely what you saw. It was like Little House on the Prairie or crop crop tops, crop tops with Care Bears on them. Like what is going on? (laughs) Yeah, this is so right. I talk to my mom about this all the time because, you know, she's one of the other boutique owners in town. And I'm like, where is the vibe of the working woman who is young but still wants to be fashion forward? Mm -hmm. It is so hard to find. So hard to find. Yeah. So that was like a really big driving force for me was like, I want to be that in between. For women who are in my age group, even if they're not in my age group, but they still feel like, I don't want to dress as old as some of these stores want me to dress, or I don't want to wear a crop top. I don't, that's not appropriate at my age, or like, I don't feel good in that. You know, I wanted to be that in between where you can still feel super cute and still feel appropriate for your age. Or how about the women who want to wear the crop top, but we just shouldn't? So. So, yeah, so that's kind of, you know, the driving force for me. And then um, also being a place where um, women of all sizes can shop, too, because I carry um, small to 3X, and then I started carrying extra smalls as well. So I really like to think that I have a very diverse selection, and I'm here for women of all types. And you have such cute stuff. Thank you. You do. Thank you. It is. Oh, my gosh. I can't walk in there without thinking, I know. I want that and that and that. (laughs) And every time we see you, it's like, Oh my gosh, you're you adorable. So cute. We never bring money in because we know we're going to spend it all. Right. We'll have to come in strategically to spend the money. Yes, yes. <laughs> come in with like a plan. Exactly. And like blinders on. A so budget. You can see what else is in there. 
<laughs> I literally had a, a couple ladies, like, I was unboxing new inventory, and they had just, like, bought a bunch of stuff. And they were like, what are those boxes over there? And I was like, well, that's new inventory. I haven't even unpackaged it. I haven't tagged it. I haven't steamed it. And they were like, well, why don't you just go ahead and open it? <laughs> <laughs> And they shaft right out of the Yeah, box. literally. They were like, oh, my gosh, so cute. Like, I was pulling dresses out. I'm like, these are so wrinkly. I'm like, this is not the presentation that yes, I want to give yeah, you. They were like, yes. we don't care. Yeah. Like, they're so cute. We just want to see what you have. Oh, my gosh. So, That's amazing. So what made you look? Because you're not from Oxford originally, correct? No, I'm not. Okay. So what brought you to Oxford? What made you even consider Oxford? So I love this area. And I will be so truthful. I had never stepped foot into Oxford until I went wedding dress shopping. Okay. And I went to Nora's Bridal, and I had such a great experience there. They were so great. But it also got me to, like, look around, and I was like, I never knew this was here. I never knew Oxford even existed. I hadn't spent a lot of time in, like, Orion. Um, I'm actually from Memphis, which is out near Port Huron, not Tennessee, for anyone <laughs> yeah. who uh. has never heard of Memphis. You probably haven't because it's only one square mile. We have one traffic light. Um, so I'm from a really small town and, but I hadn't been in a small town community in a very long time because I went to college in Saginaw and then my husband and I moved to Sterling Heights. So, um, I was really drawn to the community and the downtown area and I just thought, oh my gosh, like this place has got it going on and I really love it here and I could totally see myself in this environment. So that was really what drew me. That's awesome. That's so cool. <laughs> so I'm glad to have you yeah, here. Thank you. And you're going to do pop-ups around Oxford, right? Including our markets yeah. on Thursdays. Yeah. So we'll see you at later tonight, too. Yes, we will. <laughs> um, that first one last week was such a good experience. And I was like, this is awesome. I love it. There's so many people that come out for these events, which is really a testament, I mean, to you guys, too. Like, organizing these events around downtown and getting people out is so awesome because so many small towns and downtown districts try to put on events and nobody shows up for it you yeah. know and it's so awesome the community that you guys have really like you know cultivated around here and like everybody shows up for this stuff which is just so cool to see yeah. you see a lot of the same people every week too like yeah. showing up for like yes. the concerts in the park and like the sipping shops and things like that going on downtown it's so it's really cool yeah, yeah. thank you and I was so impressed by your setup last oh, weekend yeah. if, if you weren't there come out and see you today from yeah. four to seven because I'm like oh clothing like I wondered how I was gonna do at the market and before you know it she has like the cutest little changing <laughs> tent like a little pop-up tent to change and, and to so try her stuff you on can it. try it on yeah yeah. And I was like, well, yeah, she's going to do great because you, you know, because I think people are just fearful to buy stuff that they can't try on. But I'm like, well, that solved that problem. Yeah. <laughs> and it's adorable. Yeah. Thank you. I used to have like this one that I could like fold up and literally put it in a bag over my shoulder. But it was so light and it would kind of blow away. And, like, you know, people mm -hmm. don't really like that. So <laughs> um, I got this new one and it just pops out and it's so easy to assemble. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to work great for me. Yeah, so <laughs> cool. That is awesome. So what types of products do you have for sale in your store or online? Yeah, so I have an array of different styles. I have a lot of um, a lot of really great sundresses for summer. Um, I've got maxi skirts. I do skirts but let me just be clear about this i you will never see a mini skirt that does not have shorts underneath it amen to that ever <laughs> if it's a mini skirt i promise you it has shorts underneath or it's a pair of shorts that looks like a skirt gotcha it's magic so i have a lot of dresses skirts um tops i have some really fun accessories i like color so you'll see a lot of color in, in accessories at my store um a lot of fun textures and patterns so I really like to play with that kind of stuff um but I'm really into outfit building so everything that you see in my store has a mate or it's got multiple okay. mates so I always want to get some get styles that uh you're not just oh well I have this I have nothing to go with it or I have to find something at home to go with it mm -hmm. nope I've got at least one or two things in my store that are going to go with that specific top or with that specific bottom, so you don't even have to think about it. That's awesome. That's that so is so cool. Nice. And that does make more sense now after coming in your store mm -hmm. that that is your vibe because when you walk in there, it's so aesthetically pleasing because mm -hmm. you have your like your colors and your textures and everything together. So that makes sense now because you're right. Everything goes with something else. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, I like to tell a story with my merchandising. That was something I definitely picked up working in the retail world in Maurice's was everything needs to tell a story and it needs to flow really nicely. So when you're looking at the rack, you should be able to see the outfits. Okay. Okay. Oh my gosh. I, I love this. I'm I, learning so yeah, much. Yeah, can my like... closet tell a story? <laughs> it <laughs> it can. does tell a story. <laughs> right now it says I'm a hot mess. <laughs> But I think that's, like, perfect for people that don't, you know, I would tend to think, you know, especially if you don't want to go to the larger malls or larger stores to go into a smaller boutique and to be able to get an entire outfit with accessories, walk out, and just have what you need ready to go. So that's very, very smart. Absolutely. And say time saver, right? Yeah. Because you can literally park right in the back mm-hmm. of your store, go in, you're there to help them, you have the experience, and they can get the whole set and be out the door. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Come in and let me style you. It's my favorite thing to do. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh, deal. I know. I was like, <laughs> okay, one. <laughs> I love that. So I know that, and we won't go too far into it, but your sweet boutique, that is absolutely stunning. You've had some water issues. Unfortunately, Mother Nature, just the rain came in. So you now are focusing on pop-up shops around until we can help you find additional space. But can people find that information someplace? Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, absolutely. So I am popping up wherever I can right now. I just want to really quick give a shout out to the business community in the downtown Oxford. I've had so many other small businesses reach out to me during this time and offer me space, whether it be literally inside their store, next to their store, out front. I've had so much support and just like grace from the small business community. And it's really made me feel so included and so like accepted by the community. So I just wanted to start with that before I jump into how you can find me and where you can find me. So I will be scheduling a lot of pop-up events um, while I'm going through this kind of difficult navigation with my store. Um, But you can follow me on Instagram or on Facebook. So Instagram, my handle is shop Cassandra Co. And then on Facebook, I'm just Cassandra Co. And you can find me. I have links to my Facebook from Instagram. And I have links to Instagram from my Facebook. So you can find me there. And I am an avid social media user. I post to my story like a thousand times a day. (laughs) I'm constantly posting like pics, reels, and I always put my schedule out there. So if I'm going to be at an event, make sure you follow me on social media because you'll be able to find out all the information. How, when, where, what time, all the goings on. And we do have her linked. We have you linked to this post as well on our Facebook page. So you can just click on her Facebook link and then that'll help get you there as well. Perfect. And I do. I love following your stories and the little <laughs> reels and like you come on screen and then you have a different outfit on and I'm like, oh my gosh, I like that one too. So how did you get so good at the social part of this? Is that just because that's your generation or did you really have to work at it? You flatter me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I am so intimidated by social media, actually. Um, I just honestly practice. I go on my FYP and I'm just like, okay, what are other people like me doing? What's working for other boutiques? And that's not always going to be the same. Like what works for one boutique isn't going to work always for another. But I get a lot of inspiration just like looking like, okay, like what's out there? What are What's trending? What's the audio that's trending? Um, and just practicing editing because there were so many times that I wanted to do like fun transition videos and I'm like this is so much work I don't have time to do this all day long so trying to make like really quick transition videos or something where I could just like cut to another sequence um is something that I've tried to get really good at yeah you're good at it don't let it intimidate you 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 are good at it (laughs) and I'm hoping that you know something that we did chat about I think we talked about this too is maybe doing a fall fashion show oh yeah we did with Cassandra Mm -hmm. and then also some of the other boutiques I think that our downtown would love that Mm -hmm. um especially you know we always try to promote the businesses especially around small business Saturday and downtown days coming up and everything so I hope that we can get that together I think that would be so much fun and I think people would absolutely love it um fashion shows are so cool and you get to see a mix of all the boutiques together. Yes. And you get to see like, okay, how can I take this top that I just got 
at mainstream and how can I make it with work with something that I got from Cassandra Co yes. or from the boulevard like you can really take and like blend all of those together and it shows people they have so many options Absolutely. because you have competition how so like a design competition okay like with the different uh, the, we'll, we'll table this for later but like different products from different businesses I love and then this. like put it together somehow I love Ooh, this and yeah. now it's your idea <laughs> And I'm running with it because usually I have to bring her something and she has to talk me down. Yeah. It's just an idea. We'll nope, table nope. it for we'll later. Do it. We'll do <laughs> it. I love that. I love that. Like, whose outfit was best? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Little voting. Okay. Yeah. A little friendly competition. I love it. But this. it wouldn't be all of your products. So you would have to be using other businesses' products too. Yeah. I love that. Collaboration at its finest. Okay. <laughs> I'm all for it. So what about your husband? Is he all in on everything that you do? And is how is he involved? He is. He's like my biggest supporter. I couldn't ask for a better partner, honestly. Like he was so into this dream of mine. And he was like, you know what? He's like, because I told him, I'm like, I think I want to leave my corporate job. And I think I want to open a brick and mortar. Like I've been doing this online for a while. And I've been doing these pop-ups. And I just really think I can do it. And he was like, I think you can do it. He was like, we're, you know, like, we just got married. We're young. He's like, we don't have kids yet. He goes, he's like, it's always going to be hard. He's like, don't get me wrong. You know, starting a business is not easy. He goes, but I'll tell you what. He goes, it's probably going to be 10 times harder when you've got a toddler clinging to your hip. Yep. <laughs> yep. And I was it like, yeah. so true. <laughs> so he was like all in. He's like, I think if you go for it, he's like, you go for it now. And we find out if it's going to work. And I will just say that, like, I have had him do so much, like, manual labor for free in my store, like, sorry, but he doesn't get paid to do any of that. You know, he just has to, he just does it for me. And um, with the pop-ups and everything, he's packed and unpacked my car so many times and he never bats an eye. If I say, okay, hon, we got to go pack up the car. He's like, okay, let's do it. You know? (laughs) I love that. That's great. And you said you guys are coming up on your one year anniversary. Yes. That's so exciting. Congratulations. Thank you. When is your one year? August 19th. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's so cool. So it's been a big year for you. It's been a really big year. Yeah. Yeah. I remember we were at, on New Year's, we were at the Roxy in Rochester and I told Colin, he was like, what's your, um, What's your New Year's resolution? I said, I'm opening a brick and mortar this year. Aww. And I did. Yeah. That's five amazing. months later. You did. I had a store. Yes. He was like, let's make it happen. I was Aww. like, yes. Oh, that is yeah. so cool. That is so cool. Oh, my gosh. To be young and have energy. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> Do you remember those days, though? I, you have a lot of energy. I pretend to have a lot of energy. <laughs> well, you you do have a lot of energy yeah. compared to the average beer. Yeah. Espresso helps. Yes. yes. Lots of yes. espresso. You know, one thing that I have to say is, you know, we love having you in the downtown and just that fresh and young vibe that you bring. The excitement. We are so blessed to have as many boutiques as we do downtown mm-hmm. and just retail shopping. Because the one thing that I see in a lot of the downtowns is that is what they're missing. And for us, that really creates walkability. So from a downtown perspective and a DDA perspective, we just, we love and want you to stay, you know, because I think it is such a big deal to have that in a downtown. And it really does make a downtown. And from a selfish perspective, I love having it close, right? To be able to pop in and not have to drive as far. (laughs) Right. So you're at the mall. Yeah, right. (laughs) Um, so you're at the market tonight. What else do you have over the next week? Yeah. So tonight, open air market. And then tomorrow, I'll actually be at Coyote Joe's. Okay. Right? So Coyote Joe's. Yep. In Shelby. I think it's in Shelby Township, right? Okay. I don't know. know. I think that's the cool place to go for the youngins. Is it, it is. Okay. Well, that's why we yeah. don't know about it. I know. Okay. I, I heard it from the intern. Oh. So. <laughs> I personally have not been that's, there. That's the only youngness we have in our life, the intern. I actually don't know what city it's technically in, but Coyote Joe's, if you know, they do the line dancing. I think they do on, like, Thursday nights. They yeah. do line dancing classes, and they do, like, small concerts every now and then, too. They'll have, you know, like, a pretty well-known band show up. Um, but they have a girls' night out tomorrow, oh. which is really fun. It starts at 8 o'clock. It's $10 tickets. You can buy online or you can get them at the door if they're not sold out by tomorrow night. Um, And they're going to have vendors. 
Um, they're going to have a DJ. They're going to have food trucks. They're going to have, um, like, photo backdrop walls oh, where you can fun. take selfies wow. and music. It's just going to be really, really fun. So that was kind of a last-minute event that I got pulled into. But if you follow uh, Things to Do Metro Detroit, they post so many events in the Metro Detroit area, and that was one of the events that they had going on. So I'm going to go there tomorrow night, and I think it's going to be a really good time. Yeah. That Excellent. That's fun. Mm-hmm. We should have a girls' night. Okay. That's great. Okay. <laughs> Anything else you would like to add or chat about? Um, you know, just, you know, follow me on on my socials. Uh, get to know me there. I get new inventory like every week. I constantly have fresh styles rotating in. If you need style inspiration, I love to do like outfit inspo videos. Um, and I'm going to start doing regular lives on TikTok as well. So, if you follow me on TikTok, it's the same handle as my Instagram shop Cassandra Co. I'll do live sales um, there. I'm going to try and get on a weekly rotation. So make sure to stay updated with me. Awesome. What is your favorite outfit right now in your store that you could buy? Like if I went on your website right now that I could put together and buy, what is your favorite? So tough. I know. I'm sorry. My favorite Um, The hard-hitting question. Honestly, it might might be the one I have on right now. Oh, really? Yeah. (laughs) Okay. Well, we need – I'm going to walk – can you stand up so Um, we can see? Yeah. Oh, that's cute. Yeah, that's cute. So cute. (laughs) Very good. So the skirt is Michelle McDowell. Um, That's a really – kind of a Lily Pulitzer kind of brand, so she's southern. And then the tank is just like – the it's the perfect – fit ribbed tank on my website right now cool excellent (laughs) very cute and do you want to show your purse that you made oh yeah (laughs) show my purse I'll show my purse all day long so cute yep very cute I did this for my bachelorette party last summer right before the Barbie movie came out and I dressed up as the Margot Robbie Barbie with the pink and white gingham so cute (laughs) I love love that she comes strolling down the hallway today and I was like we kind of bumped into each other like right around the corner over here and I was like oh my gosh you look so cute (laughs) you're so summery and very vibrant I love all the colors you definitely have a lot of color in your store it's so beautiful I love color I'm fighting back against big beige there you go (laughs) And I love the fact that you can have a clear purse because I could never do that. I mean, I have stuff. You are so organized. (laughs) I'm just thinking about all like the granola bar crumbs and like oh all the kids wrappers and and all the things. But you reach in and you just come out with like a handful of crumbs. If you're ever hungry, (laughs) just reach into Kelly's purse. (laughs) Oh, just wait. Once you have kids, you'll understand. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for coming and spending some time with us today. We're so happy to have you. Um, Despite the challenges that you're facing right now, we want to support you in any way that we can. And so we're excited to have you at the market tonight and anything you need, obviously just keep us posted. Thank you so much. It was so great being on the podcast. And um, like I said, everybody's been so supportive and so welcoming. So it's so, so very appreciated, especially being such a new business. (laughs) So I just, The community is awesome, and and the DDA is awesome. So thank you so much. Thank you. I know. That's one of the things that I continue to hear from our guests is the community of the business owners. And it never – I will never tire of it, of hearing that. Yes. Because it's such a beautiful situation to be in, to have that support in a situation like you're in and having people reach out and offer help and want to be there and see you succeed. Because I know not all downtowns, I know not all business owners are as collaborative and supportive. So it's just really heartwarming to hear that. Agreed. Yeah, I definitely think that if we can continue on that path, um, that's what really makes a successful downtown. Yeah, that's, yeah, absolutely. So what's up, Miss Kelly? No, nothing. I'm fine. (laughs) It's been busy, but it always is. But we had... A lot this week with just um, some big meetings, some development meetings, um, Oakland County meetings, and a lot of great things that are coming. But even with those great things, it is a lot of work. Yep. Um, and then today's our biggest day of the week with the market and with the concert. So it's all good, though. Yeah, we kicked off Cornhole early, earlier this week. Yeah. So that was super fun. I think a lot of 
positive feedback on that. So that's rolling. We unfortunately had to cancel our line dancing second session just yes. due to a lack of um, interest. But we're looking at different options for maybe some other types of dancing through the fall into the winter. Um, yeah, and we still have our wind down Wednesdays and car shows on Wednesday. And our trolleys running Friday and Saturdays with and, the, yeah. and um, the peddler pub peddler what is the bike shop Holly and peddlers Holly and peddlers yes. yeah I felt like kind of a ignorant I for lack of a better word is when we when I pulled up to do cornhole on Tuesday um, there was a huge group of bikers together and Larry came over the owner of um, Oxford Bike Shop came over and was playing cornhole. I was like, oh, I didn't know you guys had another group. I thought it was on Sunday. You know, it's Tuesday. Why? That's a really, really big group. And he's like, oh, no, that that's homegrown. Yes. And so I did not connect that in the moment. But now I, I remember that. Yeah, so, there's quite a few, I think, yeah. different bike groups around. And it's so funny that you mentioned that because uh, Larry texted me this morning and said, bike racks, Cal. And I'm like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> they actually get here Monday finally. Oh, good. So we'll good. have bike racks back there yeah. for that public space because it does seem that more people are, you know, coming into the downtown either on foot or bike. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be nice. Yeah, there was a huge group. And then to think that they pop into either homegrown or grab tap what after. it's all about. Yeah, it was wonderful. So it's been a busy week. Um, it's going to be busy tonight. Who do we have for our band tonight? I'm so excited about this. So this is RSO, but it's a band that's like the big band era. And so 30s, 40s, uh, Sinatra hits. And I think they're bringing, is it 12 different? Instruments? That's a great question. I did not confirm the number, but when okay. he gave me his kind of bio of the band, it was 17 piece. Okay. Band. Okay. So I don't know if all 17 people are coming because that's going to be a very tight squeeze in our little gazebo. Yes. So I don't know how we're going to work that logistically, but it'll work out. It'll be great. We're going to have a good time tonight. I'm excited for yeah. this one. Too. I'm excited for this one. You know, for me, it's become less of who's playing, but more of the entire experience mm -hmm. together. And I think a lot of people feel that way, no matter if they are excited about the genre of music or not, they yeah. really, they're meeting their friends, they're visiting the restaurants and shopping beforehand, coming to the market, and then letting their kids run crazy and yep. pop a bunch of balloons. <laughs> so it's really become a yeah. really fun night out for families in downtown. Yeah, it's it's interesting because we were, when we were setting up the concerts, and I know we got a lot of feedback from people around, you know, maybe not selecting certain bands this year that we have in the past. And what we were trying to do this year was really offer some new options, some new sounds. And so we went kind of with a tribute band theme and tried to hit a couple different genres. Um, but it's interesting because we were wondering if we were going to still get the participation for some of these more like specific yeah more bands. niche bands. yeah yeah but we and really we have did. yeah it's been great yeah it's been good and we have strategic planning on monday Thank which you. is it's going to good. be good but a lot of thought that goes into something like that right mm -hmm. because we're really talking about okay what does oxford look like in the next three to five years and it that's a lot of pressure. So I'm glad that we don't have to decide that. And we have a lot of people who are coming together to <laughs> share their ideas so yep. that it's really more collaborative yeah. and it's not all on us. Yeah. No, it'll be good because then we can get the framework together and then just really start working on the details of where do we want to go? Where do we want to see ourselves in that time frame? Yeah. And besides for that, a couple new businesses opening next week. Scott's Toys on the corner, mm -hmm. the back portion of Modern Marketplace, um, Gracefully Crafted by Lori yep. is also in that space. And then uh, Summer Sundays, I believe, has Ooh. either a week or two. They're waiting on DTE for power, but they should be opening their doors, too. I am so excited for this. This is such an exciting. For those that don't know, Summer Sundays is going to be in Custard. Custard. Custard mm -hmm. shop. And so do you know details about, like, is it? you know, toppings, kind of like a... I don't oh. know for sure. I do know that they're going to be serving outside of the window okay. this year and then take this fall and winter to redo the inside Got so it. then they can have seating inside. Okay. So I don't know if it'll be a little more simple Basic, to start. Yeah. And then next year, I mean, really 
Yeah. Really ramp it up. Either way. Yeah. It's awesome to have that option so close by. Yes. Yay. I know. It's great. Bad for the waistline. <laughs> great for all of us that have kids. We'll you just know? sample it. Yeah. Exactly. Just sampling it. Exactly. Oh. Well, all right. We'll see you next week. We'll see week you next then. week. Yeah. Have a all great right. week, everyone. Thank you.